back to my channel. So today's video is this exciting concept I thought of when I was actually reaching for fragrances on this shelf and a couple other shelves that I have um, to wear that day. And I, I mean, I'm sure you can see from the title, but I thought about how many times this has happened to me where the flanker of a fragrance it ends up being better than the original because there's certainly cases where the original is the favorite. And I think that is the more expected option where you think the original is better and the flanker isn't necessarily better. Um, but I wanted to do one where I thought the flanker was my favorite. And actually, once I was pulling out fragrances, I ended up realizing with the amount I'm going to talk about them and how many I have to talk about, um, I could easily do a part two. So let me know in the description box, or not the description box, in the comments if you'd like to see a part two, and let's get started. So in, I think, almost all the cases, I do have the original as well, so I can do a comparison, um, except for the first one I'm going to talk about. In that case, I don't have it. I do have a sample at some point or at some place. I did, um, but I can't find it. So the flanker in question is La Belle Le Parfum. I'm still on the hunt for um, the newer one, La Belle Le Terrible or something. It is not anywhere in Canada. Like I can't find it online. I can't find it anywhere. I know it's being sold in Europe, so you guys let me know, but I'd be interested to add that one to my collection. But anyways, this is a flanker that I think is infinitely better from what I remember the original being. And I know the original got a whole lot of hype, but I really wish I had, oh my God, I love this. I can't, I should, I probably shouldn't spray all of these, but oh my God. Um, I'm so happy I picked this up because I find it so much more delicious sweet, warm, wearable, and inviting than the original, which I think got so much hype. And I think part of what I didn't like about that original was how the pear and vanilla were kind of, it almost felt like visually they were like suspended and there was nothing grounding them. There wasn't enough warmth to its sweetness, but there's a real warmth to like the Tonka vanilla to this um, that I don't really get that kind of um, light and I don't mean light as in it isn't present but light as in a light pear scent that was in the original. I adore this though I think it's obviously infinitely better than the original but it's made me have such an appreciation for the scent as a whole that every time I wear this and I wear this a lot I really really enjoy it it makes me think that I should give the original another shot. And that is where I think you can fall into um, a trap with these kinds of things. And especially with, with lines that you think you might like. Not all flankers are created equal. And I've talked about this on my channel before of how you can have flankers that are almost identical. You can have flankers where they're, you know, worlds apart where you don't even know why it's a flanker. And then you have that middle ground where they have some of the original, but some difference. And that's really the sweet spot, I think, for what a flanker should be. There should be some of that original DNA, but there should be enough of a difference to justify um, the purchase. Whether you like the flanker or not, that's where I think the sweet spot falls. And from what I can remember, I think La Belle does that. You can, you can tell that there is something from the original there, but it is infinitely better. So I love that one. In second, not in second place, but um, the second one I want to talk about is actually one that I think when I first started my channel was really talked about and YouTube actually did make me buy it because I ignored these bottles and these fragrances for a very long time. And I think I just didn't, I didn't vibe with the bottle. I'm not like a fanatic of the brand. I definitely have a lot of fragrances from Burberry, but anyways, I ignored them for a long time and I uh, ended up getting both because of YouTube and I got my Burberry and my Burberry Black. I don't have the blush and it's in part because of my shared experience of these. I think overall that these 
I was justified in thinking that these are fragrances I rarely if ever reach for. Um, I personally don't like the bottles, the caps really, uh, but that's not the reason I just don't reach for them. They just never really speak to me. But the original is my Burberry, obviously. Um, and I, like many of you, agree that my Burberry Black is better than the original. And I'm going to spray both to kind of compare them side to side. I I will say that I think there are some similarities between the two. I don't think um, it's the kind of fragrance where you're like, oh, this smells completely different. I can't even tell. But there is there's something there that kind of connects them, but there is um, enough of a difference where if you like both, I think you can definitely justify having both. However, the I'm going to start with the original. The reason I think the original is definitely a least favorite for me and the two, um, there is a real... This is much more of a floral um, and it's much more of a spring fragrance and much lighter and brighter than the the My Burberry Black, which you would think in my taste might make it better, but it doesn't. The floral in this is very dewy, very um, on its way into becoming aquatic or murky, um, and sometimes it really can smell murky on me, and it does right now. At, at its best, it is a generic floral and at its worst it has that murkiness that I just think smells really bad on my skin and um, personally I just don't think it's something I don't like wearing it it doesn't make me happy it doesn't spark joy in any way and um I think it just kind of highlights that murkiness unfortunately now I will just say overall I'm not someone who's ever understood the hype or any of the kind of huge praise that my Burberry Black my Burberry Black gets. This isn't a fragrance that I justify buying for just anyone. I really think you shouldn't actually blind buy this because I think it's quite particular and quite unique, which is a good thing, especially in the designer fragrance world. I mean, I give them props for that for sure, but um, at the very least, there isn't a murkiness in this. There is, um, there was a lot more warmth and spice to the black compared to the original. And overall, I am happy that I have the larger bottle of this in comparison. But this is a case where even for someone who I don't really have like a huge appreciation taste wise for these scents, I can without a doubt agree that my Burberry Black the flanker is much better than the original. All right, so we are gonna get to the third one, and this is one that I actually have a couple flankers for. There's a couple cases where I have more than one flanker, and I'm assuming you guys knew this was happening. I'm gonna link everything I can in the description box below, so definitely check that out as always. But that is Alien. And this is kind of the opposite situation as what happened with my Burberry, because I feel like I still really, really like the original. I only have a little bit left. And this is um, like OG formula before it was Mugler, before, when it was Terry Mugler and, you know, the strong formulation. So I do kind of keep this on for special occasions because there's so little left, but I also have a feeling it's going off, so I need to wear it. Anyways, all that to say is I do really like I do like the original and I've always liked it and in between being like an alien or angel girl in my life, I'm forever and ever an alien girl. I don't even own angel. Um, so it's not a case of the original fragrance being displeasing or not to my taste. I actually really like it. The thing is, every time I've tried a flanker and I by no means have tried them all, but I'm going to show you three of them. I feel like I love the flankers so much. I've always gravitated towards the flankers more. Um, and so I'm gonna show you all three flankers that I have. The first one is probably my favorite, actually. Um, Alien Essence Absolute. I think, oh my God, 
I'm gonna put this one on, I don't care. This is the perfect flanker. This is such a, this actually might have been the one. Um, yeah, I think this was the one where I was kind of sparked with the idea of talking about it because I think this is such a quintessential example of the flanker being better than the original and that the flanker being discontinued just sends people into a frenzy because I think it's spectacular. I think it heightened what Alien already was and made it better, warmer, deeper, longer lasting, richer, um, more interesting, all of the things you could ever want. And I'm definitely team on bringing this back. I don't wear it that often. And when I do, I don't wear a whole lot of it because I actually think it's very intense performing and it rivals the original in that way, um, in a way that the reformulations of the original Alien just don't. But yeah, I love this. I am I will be devastated when I run out of it, but I've never gotten a refill or a backup and I won't, um, knowing me. It's gonna last me enough of a good time, but I really do recommend it. Um, the other one is, and I always forget this one, Liqueur de Parfum. Um, also a flanker that was discontinued. I'll spray oh, this one. It's beautiful. It's very similar to Essence de Parfum. I like this one a little bit less and I've talked about that over the years or over the previous videos that I've done. I think it has a root beery opening that kind of sets it apart, but overall ends up in a very similar area um, to Essence de Parfum, in, in which case I again prefer this to the original and it's just warmer and richer and all those things like I've mentioned. A very different flanker that I wasn't expecting to love as much is um, the Alien Mirage. I picked this up in Duty Free, very, very inexpensive when I picked it up. I'm running out of space, but I love this one. This is very much my warm weather Alien Reach, um, like I mentioned, because I'm pretty much run running out of the OG that I have. This is what I wear when it's way too hot uh, to pull out my Alien Essence or Liqueur. I feel like those do really well in colder weather, naturally. Um, it's spectacular. I really, really like this one. I feel like it does not get enough hype. Um, it actually makes me really happy to wear this scent. So perfect example and perfect kind of line where I feel like the flankers just have done such a great job or the house has done such a great job of creating flankers that stay within what alien smells like and you you can recognize the line um as being as having kind of an underlying accord that makes it so recognizable but the flankers are incredible and in many cases a lot of people prefer them all right so the next set the fourth set um second last is actually another case where um they i have more than one flanker but it's a good example of how the original can be better than one flanker and worse than another. And having said that, I think you'll know which one I mean if you know me. Um, have like a mental guess now. And if you guessed Girl of Now, you would be correct. So this is the original, obviously. I love this one. I have all three in the line. I think there's only three. I imagine there would be. Um, I don't think there's any more. This is an incredible fragrance. I love it. I think it stands well on its own and I definitely do wear it. The flanker that I think is better than the original by a small margin, but still better, is uh, Girl of Now Shine. Um, I forgot this one. Girl of Now Shine, that's what it's called. Oh my God, okay. I probably shouldn't have sprayed three because these are also very long lasting, but I love it. I think it does kind of what, in theory, Essence de Parfum did for Alien for me. It heightens the sweet, ultra sweetness in this, the florals in this, the nuttiness in this. I think it just kind of amps it up um, and took everything I already loved about the original and kind of turned it on high, um, which is all that you'd really want. And I love it. I love both for sure, but that is a flanker that if I only had to pick one to wear forever more and I ran out of both, I would continue buying the shine. However, um, you might think, and I did originally, that, you know, Ellie Saab could do no wrong and another flanker will be great. This is a flanker I think went in a completely different direction and I know that's not what the video is about, but I wanted to 
mention it since I was already talking about it. Girl of Now Forever, in my opinion, is the lesser. I know a lot of people like it and it's obviously up to taste, but I think it ventures way too far away from what the Girl of Now and Girl of Now Shine smell like. Um, I've always maintained it smells a lot more like um, my insolence from Guerlain, which again is a flanker I don't like because it, it ventured way too far away from insolence. Um, it's very much like a raspberry lemon sweet scent rather than anything to do with orange blossom or nuttiness. So you can't always know and you might fall into the trap of thinking a line and all its flankers are for you, but you win some, you lose some. And in the case of the original and shine, Shine is better than the original. Finally, the last one I want to talk to you guys about, they actually have different bottles right now um, because I got one in the old bottle and one in the newer bottle, but they are, they are essentially flankers. I mean, I struggled to really, this is the most probably controversial. Some of you might agree, some may not. Um, it has been, it's listed underneath the same collection and it's sort of supposed to be, but if, even if it's not, people often get them confused as being in one line. So I'm gonna talk about them together. But that is L'Instant de Guerlain and L'Instant Magique. And Again, they do smell very different. They might not be exactly flankers with one another. I am not a Guerlain expert, but they do fall under the same line um, on Fragrantica. So I want to talk about them and I wanted to take an opportunity to talk about them because I know L'Instant Magique um, gets a lot of hype in the powdery fragrance world and because of the confusion of how similar their names are and obviously both being Guerlain fragrances in the same line, and how hard it is, impossible it is to find Les Saint Magique, I do have to confirm, having had both, there was a huge difference, and this one, the harder one to find, is unfortunately infinitely better than Les Saint de Guerlain. I think Les Saint de Guerlain, you can see, I do have a dent in it, so I certainly wear it, is a scent that I had first, because it's easier to find, and when I first got it, I did like it a lot more and ever since I've been wearing it more there is something in in its dry down especially because it lasts so long that it gets a bit honeyed in its heart and dry down that gets a little bit more honeyed than personally I prefer. Guerlain does a powdery scent like no other. I think they are one of the powerhouses of a powdery fragrance so I've had you know, a love and appreciation for their scents my entire life. Um, and that that exists in Les Sondes de Guerlain. There's definitely a powderiness in there, but I think it's that honeyedness and the kind of stickiness that happens somewhere in the heart and the dry down, and it's so long lasting that makes it so that Les Sondes Magique has this such, such a cooler, um, in terms of like temperature, like cooler, cleaner, and more violet powderiness that I think is much more easier to wear and much more approachable and just much prettier uh, overall. So if you can at all get your hands on this, I found this in like a small like hole in the wall fragrance store in Portugal. And from what I could tell and what I've heard, it's a lot easier to get your hands on in Europe. I think it's like nearly impossible in North America. So if you can at all get even a decant, definitely recommend that one is beautiful. So yeah, that was my video on a part one of fragrances where the flanker is better. Again, I'd love to do a second part, so let me know in the comments below if you're interested. Let me know which one of these fragrances and their flankers you've tried or you'd like to try. I'd love to hear from you. Everything will be linked in the description box below, and I'll see you next time. Bye!